Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. There we go. So much better. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's. Good morning if you're in our building joining us today. Good morning if you're on live stream. It's really great that you are with us uh, this morning. Now, I was so hopeful yesterday when I got out of bed. Saw the sun shining in the blue sky. And then at five o'clock this morning, I thought, what on earth is that noise? So I looked out my window and I was like, okay, okay. But you know, spring is coming. It is. It might seem like it's a while away, but it is coming. So just hold on there. The blossom is out. The daffodils are up. The weather just needs to work out what it's doing. But it's really great that we can be here together to worship together this morning. And it's um, a joy to be leading you. Special shout out to those with Irish connections. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope uh, if that uh, is something that's special to you, you're able to celebrate well this morning. So this morning we are uh, in our final few sermons on the Sermon on the Mount, and I'm delighted this morning that we have our guest speaker, Nigel Hand. Uh, Nigel was a canon missioner at the cathedral until he retired, so if you want to know what that job entailed, I suggest you grab him after coffee uh, and chat with him uh, there. Uh, But it's really great that Nigel's coming to speak to us this morning on not the easiest topic, seems to have been that way with this sermon series, Uh, but we're thinking about anxiety and worry, uh, and Nigel's going to help us to reflect a little bit about that on that this morning. We are also going to be sharing testimony together, so this is your plug now. Uh, If you've got a testimony that is short, brief, Uh, but very encouraging. Um, We're going to invite you a little bit later on in our service uh, to come and share that with us. So I've got one already, uh, but if you think there's something that you want to share, remembering that we are live streaming and uh, you have permission to share if you're sharing on behalf of somebody else or it involves um, another person, then we'd love to hear that. So uh, a bit later on, I'll invite you up if you'd like to share in testimony this morning. Our children are going out in today groups, as usual, and uh, Diana will come and say something about Easter stuff for the children uh, a little bit later on. But let's just still ourselves and be ready. Let's just take a moment just to step out of the busyness of the week, whatever you might have been doing, wherever you find yourself at the moment. This is a place where we can come and just focus on the Lord. To focus on Jesus, who is always willing and ready to meet with us. So, Father God, we welcome you here this morning. We thank you for your willingness to meet with us. Thank you that you are always ready to meet with us, to speak to us. And we pray this morning, Lord, that we would hear from you as we ready our hearts, as we steady our minds. Lord, would you come and draw alongside us today as we listen to your word, as we reflect on what that means to us today. Would you inspire and challenge us? You are welcome here this morning, Lord, and we pour out our praise to you. Amen. So do stand if you're able to, and um, Sarah will lead us in our worship. Good morning. Um, This first song has some actions and general enjoyment, so if we could have some helpers on the dais, that would be amazing. Um, Please feel free to worship in whatever way you'd like to join me. One, two, three.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can come and we can praise you. Thank you for the words of that song that tells your story, your story of salvation for us, for how you long to draw us in, into your freedom, into your love. Thank you that we can gather here and express that to you this morning, Lord. Thank you that even when we don't feel worthy, even when the walls are up, that you want to break those down and to meet with us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that there is nothing more or less that we could do to be in that place of meeting, to receive that invitation. We welcome and praise you here this morning. Amen. Amen. Do you please take a seat? Hello once again. If you've joined us uh, since we've been worshipping, it's really great to have you with us this morning. Particularly welcome if you are new or you're visiting with us today. We're really glad that you're here with us and uh, we would love to get to know you a little bit better. So we've got a couple of ways that you can do that. We have our hello and welcome cards, which are found just outside on the table in the foyer. Um, fill in one of these, give it to one of the welcome team, and uh, we'll give you a phone. One of the uh, team members here will give you uh, a ring and have a chat with you about all the things that happen uh, between Sunday to Sunday, because uh, there's an awful lot um, at this, this building, this church is used for and does. So we'd love to uh, let you know more about that. Um, but of course, as I say, every time if filling out your card, filling out a card is not your thing and you'd actually like to speak to somebody, we have a couple of connectors for you this morning. We've got um, Liz, yep, Liz can, and Susie. Yes, brilliant. So Liz and Susie are our connectors this morning. They'll be out in the circulation area um, with their own supply of tea and coffee. So if nothing else, you get to skip the queue. Um, so do please uh, chat to them after the service. Uh, they are uh, f fonts of all sorts of knowledge about St. John's, uh, and they'd love to share that with you. So a little bit of church family news. As always, stay connected with the Roundup. The Roundup is the weekly email that goes out on a Thursday. If you're not yet signed up, please do sign up. It's a wealth of information uh, that you might need during the week and uh, looking ahead into the, the months ahead. Um, it comes out on a Thursday, and uh, it's really useful um, for us to be able to connect with you in that way. So if you're not already signed up, please do come and ask me uh, or uh, go onto the website or ring the church office and they'll be able to tell you how to do that. If you were here last week, um, you will have remembered that we launched our appeal uh, for Resurrection Church Beirut. So you've watched a video of Krista. Um, this is an appeal from RCB uh, to build a tent structure next to their church. Is there a slide? No, there's no slide. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Krista and Hikmat, who lead Resurrection Church, are planning to build a tent next to their church because their church is just growing, uh, which is wonderful to see. Um, but they need a structure to keep their congregation safe uh, and uh, for, for bigger events. So we are launching an appeal here. If you would like to give to that appeal, um, you'd be really welcome to do so. There are a couple of ways to do that. There's more information in the roundup. Uh, you can go through that or... Um, there's stuff in the website, I think, I think there's stuff on the website that, uh, that you can have a look at on there. Or you could put cash or check in an envelope, mark tent appeal, and put it in our baskets um, as they go around this week or next week. We're quite keen to get uh, any money raised sent off by April, so if that's on your to-do list, um, perhaps make that a priority this week. If you do want more information or you missed the appeal last week, Janet... Uh, is uh, Janet Ryland is the person to speak to or I've got some more information so do make use of that after the service. You may have been aware that um, we are looking for a new worship pastor since John uh, left us. Yes. Uh, so um, if you want to apply... <laughs> Great. But if you know somebody, um, if you know somebody, we all have different networks and connections. So you might just think, oh, I know somebody who might be interested in applying. Do encourage them um, or get them to have a look on our website. Yeah, on our website. Um, and if you have social media and you see this kind of advert on your social media, share, 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 share it away. Share it away. Um, and uh, we'd be great. It, that would be really great if you could help us uh, to share on your different networks. There's a little thing called Easter coming up. Who's still recovering from Christmas? 
Uh, Easter's on its way. It's really quick. It is Palm Sunday next week. Unlike last week when John said it was Palm Sunday this week, it's Palm Sunday next week. So that is obviously the start of Holy Week. You notice on our chairs or um, in our circulation area, we have our little cards. And that's got all the details of our uh, offerings this Easter. So um, do take a couple of these. Think about who you might want to invite. It's a really wonderful time to bring people into church to hear the hope of that resurrection story once again. So um, just to highlight, Diana's going to highlight something in a moment, but just to highlight the 2 o'clock service, which is an hour at the cross. So that's 2 o'clock in here. It's a quiet, reflective service, um, just focusing on the last hours of Jesus' life on the cross. And this year, we are going to be thinking and reflecting on um, Jesus' last words from the cross and we're building a service around that. So do encourage you to come to that. It's, it's a poignant service on a poignant day. So do join us if you can, 2 o'clock Good Friday. I've got a warden update. Is that yes? <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to Phil. Phil is uh, going to give us an update. Thank you, Joe. Yes, yeah, so um, my name's Phil, one of the wardens here um, during this time of vacancy. And it's just a very quick update to say... Probably a month ago, I was up here um, encouraging people to fill in a survey as part of our engagement process during this vacancy um, time. Uh, So this is the verbal thank you card to say thank you very much to all those who have done that. Um, The answers are in. We've uh, got a team of people considering and and reading through those, and we will be producing um, a parish profile as part of the process, um, and we are on on track. So it's just to assure you that we're, we're pr- progressing through uh, in this time of vacancy. So thank you all very much. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you, Phil. I'm not going to keep that out because now I'm going to hand it over to Diana, who's coming stage left. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. I was hoping for the red one so that I could Were be you? matching. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it coordinated with your outfit, so... <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) See, it's all going on up here, isn't it? It it is, yeah. (laughs) So, uh, first of all, the other um, Good Friday event that we wanted to highlight, uh, for those of you uh, to whom it may be applicable, uh, on Good Friday from 3.30 until 4.30, we're having an all-age activity hour. Uh, Everybody is welcome, but this is particularly suited to those who have got under-11s in their family. And uh, it's going to be an hour of different interactive activities uh, to help us engage with all the different parts of the Easter story. Um, Weather permitting, there'll be a mini trail going around the outside of the building. I have to put that caveat on it. (laughs) Um, So uh, yeah, it will be a really good opportunity, um, again, to explore the Easter story, to engage with the events of Good Friday uh, in an accessible and family-friendly way. So please do come along to that if you are around. The other thing, I don't know if it's very obvious this morning, there are some people missing. Um, Many of our Pathfinders are away on their weekend away uh, over at Frank Chapman Centre in Budley this weekend. So we do have a little bit of an update to share. And uh, uh, just to highlight, there will be no Pathfinders group upstairs this morning as all of the team are away. So if you are a Pathfinder and you're here this morning, we are really pleased that you're here with us. And we would love you to stay in the service this morning uh, and enjoy all that is on offer down here. Uh, But for those who are away, I gather it has been a slightly damp but good (laughs) weekend (laughs) so far. Um, They've had uh, guest speaker Jack Jones from YFC join them. Uh, They had a great session on Friday evening thinking about uh, identity and wrestling with God. And uh, the team tell me there was some really beautiful engagement in the worship uh, there on Friday evening. Um, Yesterday was a really fun-packed and busy day. Uh, a Q&A on friendship with a the panel. There was archery and high ropes. Um, I'm sure everybody will come back in one piece if, <laughs> if your child is away. Um, I've not had any... Um, any notifications of, you know, arrows going astray or anything like that. So I, I'm gathering that everything went well. Uh, but again, really lovely sessions with the young people, all engaging. And uh, the team uh, have told me that they had much better sleep last night than they did on Friday night. <laughs> so that is a blessing in itself. But uh, it would be great if we could just take a moment to pray for them Definitely. as their weekend draws to a close. 
Um, the team have particularly asked for God to bless them with the en- them, the team and the young people with energy to finish well today and uh, that God would use all things to bless those young people. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity that's been created for our youngest youth uh, to go away this weekend. And uh, we just thank you for the team and all of their work that has gone into uh, planning and supervising this weekend. And we just thank you so much that your um, presence has been felt in that place and that you have been at work there amongst those young people. We thank you so much for the worship that has been going on and the sessions that they've had. And uh, God, we just want to pray that even in today, in these closing hours of the weekend, that you would just be doing amazing things there. We just pray that each and every person, younger and, younger and older, would know your presence. We just pray that everything that has been spoken about and discussed this weekend would just, that you would use all of that, Lord, to, um, to feed those young people, to build them up, to draw them closer to you, and to share your heart with them. And uh, we just pray for those young people who are here this morning. We thank you for them. And uh, we just pray your blessing on them this morning uh, as they perhaps have a slightly different morning. And God, we just pray that, again, that you would draw close to those young people, um, that you would continue to build friendships across the board, deep in relationships, and draw each and every one of those young people to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning... This morning, I haven't finished yet. (laughs) (laughs) This morning, our 0211s are going off to their groups. Uh, So um, we will do that in a minute. Jo, would you um, bless us before we go? That would be great. Thank you. So Father God, we thank you for our young people. Thank you for our children. And uh, Lord, we pray this morning that you would really meet with them in their groups as they, uh, in their various different groups and their various different activities. Lord, would you really inspire them uh, and would you draw close to them as they learn more about you and who you are and what you offer to each of us. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be amongst them uh, as they gather this morning. Amen. Thank you. Uh, If you are visiting or if you were newer this morning and you've got children under 11 who want to come to a group and you're not sure where to go, please do ask somebody and they'll point you in the right direction. If you know where you're going, off you go. Okay. Thank you. So, for those of us not involved in going out to children's groups, can I invite you to stand if you're able? We're going to continue in our sung worship as the children go out. And during this next song, our offering baskets will come round. If that's not your way of giving or you're visiting here, please do allow the baskets to pass by. But let's just again... Invite God to come and be with us. He's already here. His spirit is here. Let's draw closer to him as we sing this morning.
Yes, Father, we're here for you. Fall down before you. Words, I am restored, I am redeemed because of you. It's caught me this morning, reflecting on those promises that God offers to restore us, to redeem us, to love us even more. We thank you, Father. Thank you that your spirit is here. Thank you for the promises you offer us, for the invitations that you offer us. And that you say, simply come. Come and rest in my presence today. As we think about how worry and anxiety can be consuming, that gentle invitation from Jesus to come. Come and rest in his presence. So we thank you for those promises, Father. Thank you that you are good and faithful. That your promises are always yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you please take a seat? Thank you, team. So, uh, testimony time. So, as I said earlier, we're going to have uh, a few moments now to share encouraging uh, stories uh, from each other. So, just a little word. If you have a story uh, or a testimony, a testimony that is brief, that is brief, <laughs> uh, encouraging, uh, that you have permission to share if you're using other people's names or it's on behalf of somebody else, and uh, to be aware that we are live streaming, so that might have an impact on whether you choose to share or not. But we would love to hear from people who have got something to share. So first of all, I'm going to invite David up. Uh, he's going to come and set the tone uh, by being very brief. And, uh... <laughs> and I get the red one too. You get the red one too. That's obviously a microphone of choice this morning. Okay. Just what I'd like to share is a few of you I've shared with over the years some of the things that happened to me uh, professionally. Um, there are limits of what I can say on that, for which you will be grateful, <laughs> um, uh, for, for legal reasons. Um, but basically, I, I was part of professionally a, a, a franchise um, for 17 years. I was very happy with that, and then things started to change. And together with a, a lot of other members, we found there were things which we felt were not right. And it wasn't just what was done, it was the way it was done, and the way in which it tried to be enforced. And um, 14 of us left um, the franchise together, and it took more than two and a half years for a uh, settlement to be, to be made, which happened last November. There are many things which uh, members of the group feel very unhappy about, and there were many things said about how we can get our own back, mm -hmm. how we can do this. And although I heard those, um, I couldn't share them. Um, but I felt myself some of those things. And doing studies about um, in the Lord's Prayer and about, as you know, we ask for forgiveness and as we ask so that we will be able to forgive others. Mm -hmm. And that is something which I have to say I have come to that. There was a wonderful thing in the Lord's Prayer um, and forgive me, it's in the Spanish version in which it says, you know, um, we ask forgiveness of our sins as we forgive others who have done us wrong mm -hmm. is the literal translation. And that is what I feel. I can feel that forgiveness. And the great thing about that is feeling the release and a lightness in spirit. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is so great. Going on and say, can I not only forgive, do I love my enemy? Mm. <laughs> Maybe I'm still working on that. <laughs> but, you know, 
Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff, come on up. I think just pondering on what David said, forgiveness is a really hard thing. It's really difficult. And we're going to be thinking about justice next week and how we perhaps move from that place of wanting revenge. <coughs> but in our hearts, Jesus wants our hearts soft and to forgive others, but it's acknowledging it's a really difficult thing. So, thank you, David. Jeff, you, do you want... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in um, my small group, we've been reading a book about how to hear God. It's a, a simple guide for normal people, or a normal guide for simple people. I can't remember. I've got the Kindle version, <laughs> so I don't see the title very often. Um, anyway, in it, um, I was reading it, and you, it's like a bolt from the blue of something that you kind of have believed, but don't really know where it's come from, and realize it's not actually that true. He was talking about how we hear God in multiple ways, um, and one of the bits that he'd said that kind of just hit me between the eyes was not everybody gets a sense of peace when something's of God. You know, you've, you're going into a new thing or whatever and you get this sense of peace and that confirms to you. I have a sense of mild terror for quite a lot of the things that I agree to or things that happen. Um, I remember when Hannah and I got engaged, I was terrified. Um, uh, and... Uh, when we found out we were having a baby, all that kind of thing. I've recently gone into a, a relatively new job at work. Terror would be the biggest description, but it was this sense of release that that doesn't kind of imply whether God's in it or not. For some people, he will give a sense of peace to, I am sure. That, that's not his communication model with me. And it was just that sense of, fantastic, I don't need to be worried why I don't have this sense of peace. Um, and actually, working in the terror is just maybe a, a way that he uses to motivate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> I think that's very much to do with God knows who we are and what, what will work for us. What will work for me won't work for somebody else. And God just holds all that, doesn't he? It's amazing that, um, yeah, I've had moments of that too very frequently of stepping into something that's absolutely terrifying, uh, but knowing that that's what, what God is expecting me to do. So thank you for that reminder, Jeff. Um, anyone else? Just looking. Last call. Yes, yes, Kate. Now, Kate, I'm going to give you a choice because that this seems to be what the people want this morning. I'm suggesting blue. Okay. okay. Blue it is. There is a bit of blue. <laughs> Hi. Um, you said something about doing something in terror. Mm -hmm. It's quite terrifying coming up here. <laughs> and I didn't really want to. Uh, but I thought I would just encourage us thinking about worry and thinking about actually sometimes you have to ask for help. And that's perhaps the biggest challenge. And as some of you know, I was in Uganda for a few years. And they, the Ugandan people have a different view of money than we do. And so they very happily ask you for money for different things. And I find it very difficult, as you can imagine, very for my culture, to ask for money and to actually, how do I respond to it? And I have quite a few sponsored um, students that uh, I've picked up on the way. And I just thought, somebody wrote email, and they said, can you sponsor us? And I thought, this is just one too many for me. I just felt overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And also guilty, because of course, we're quite affluent here, and they're coming from a place of real poverty. And so I thought, what do I do? So. Eventually, with God's prompting, I think, I emailed a few people, and there is a young lady in Uganda who's being sponsored to become a, a registered nurse. She's currently an enrolled nurse, and so she needs to get her registration. And so she is very grateful and very excited, um, and I'm very relieved, um, but it is overwhelming, and it's amazing what pressure 
being asked to help actually means. But I thought I'd share that because of worry. But also thanking God, because this lady is up, this young woman is now on the course. Mm -hmm. And thank you to my friends who helped. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kate. So that's a really timely reminder, isn't it, of God's provision, uh, but also how he holds that worry and how we get so caught up and bound up in that worry and anxiety. And we're not very good at asking for help. I think that's where we're very British uh, and we're not very good. So thank you so much, Kate, for that reminder. Uh, you, anybody else? Anyone else sharing? No? Yes? No, I've got, I've got multiple people pointing at me, but no hands are up. Is any Debbie. <laughs> uh, red for you, I think, this morning. I've been umming and ahhing, and you gave us one more chance, so I thought I'd just very, very quickly update you about Friday night dinner. Oh, yes. Um, because we were very worried this week, um, because we knew there were going to be some extra people. Um, the retirement group came down to join us, which added an extra 14. Wow. Um, but um, amazingly, God provided, and I'm just up here to say thank you to God for his provision. We catered for 70. And we had 80, and there was enough food. Um, it was just wonderful. But really, I mean, God's in the little things. We normally get all our food from the real junk food project. And occasionally we have to add in um, odd things to make up the recipes correctly. Uh, and we'd forgotten to buy any butter. Um, and amazingly, somebody, we don't know who this person is, but donated a pack of butter and some milk for the Friday night dinner just this week when we needed it. So God's in the small things, but also in the big things. And we were just so encouraged. Um, and the team just worked together so brilliantly to feed all these people. So praise God for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, God's provision when we're doing God's work is amazing. And Friday night dinner is, is just a wonderful place to be on a Friday. And we're so grateful for it, uh, to be building those bridges into the community. And that's an ex a lot of people to be feeding on a Friday night. So well done, team. Now, is there anybody else? Yes, thank you. <laughs> right, Jenny, I'm going blue. Okay. Uh, just on the theme of terror being up here. It was just a really quick update, because I know quite a few people asked me at the beginning of the service how John was getting on in Italy. So it was just a real quick, very quick, uh, to say that he's in Italy over the weekend, back tomorrow. I had a, did a conference yesterday with some pastors who were very, very discouraged and just going through really, really tricky times. Not and by John's teaching, though. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but just to say, um, yeah, they had a really good time of encouragement yesterday. Continue to pray for him and Marcus today. They've got a youth conference tonight. But, yeah, thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Should we do that now? Should we pray for John and for Marcus as they uh, are, are in Italy? So, Father God, we thank you uh, for the call that you placed on John and on Marcus. Thank you for the giftings that you have bestowed upon them. And we pray, Lord, for these next few hours uh, in these conferences. We thank you for all the work that was done yesterday. Thank you for how um, they, the, the, the pastors were encouraged um, and uh, sort of being able to stand in that gap with them to encourage them. And we pray tonight for the youth conference for the young people who will be going to that. Lord, would you really equip and strengthen John and Marcus that final push uh, to, uh, to teach and to encourage. We thank you so much for them. We're so grateful for them. And uh, we pray that their giftings would be really used in these next few hours. And then would you bring them safely home, Lord, uh, to us back here. And uh, we look forward to hearing what they want to share with us, or certainly what John wants to share with us when he's back. So, Father God, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Okay, I'm going to wrap up. Ollie, thank you for playing microphone roulette. That was brilliant. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Nigel in a moment. He's going to come bring us our word, but we're going to just open God's word first. Um, and then I'll pray for Nigel, and he will come and speak. So we're still in Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 6, and we're starting at verse 25. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? 
can any or one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's pray for Nigel as he comes up. Father God, thank you for Nigel. Thank you uh, for bringing bringing him here this morning to speak to us. And we pray, Lord, that you will use his preparation, that you will use him to speak your words to us this morning. May we leave inspired and challenged and encouraged as we listen to your word explained and reflected upon. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Bless you. I'm in the uh, school of Jeff, the mild sense of terror standing here with you today. It's great to be with you. Thank you for the warmth of your welcome. And may I add to Joe's uh, happy St. Patrick's Day and uh, commiserations if you're Scottish. <laughs> you know what that means. Interestingly, I, uh, Pete Gregg put on Facebook this morning uh, about Patrick. I thought it was just worth, if you've not seen it, uh, I'm not his big mate or anything, I just follow him on Facebook. You know, I've never met him, actually. He put this, Patrick, prayer warrior, abolitionist, apostle to the Irish, whose defiant witness was a light in the dark ages of post-Roman Europe. At a time of socio-political chaos, Patrick built communities of prayer, mission and justice that shaped a great nation and even, according to some, saved civilization itself. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It really is good to be with you. And as Joe mentioned earlier, I used to be at Birmingham Cathedral. I was there for 12 years. And as the great evangelical bishop J.C. Ryle used to say, clergy go to cathedrals to rust. And knowing that I was coming to St. John's Harbour, and I've been taking daily (laughs) WD-40 to try and uh, remedy that in the hope that he may have something from me. And I know that you love a good vicar story. Leonard always loved a vicar story. Uh, So in that vibe, uh, you may have heard of the vicar of whom it was said that although his sermons never spurred anyone into action, at least they woke refreshed. (laughs) So get comfortable as we look at these powerful words from Matthew's Gospel, words I suspect many of you know well. You've probably heard a hundred sermons on them. We call that the Sermon on the Mount, the first of five blocks of teaching in Matthew's Gospel. The clues are, if you you read Matthew's Gospel, there's always a clue that says, and he stood up and began to teach. And the other clue is words like, after he had said these things, He sat down. And you'll find that five times in Matthew's Gospel. And this, the Sermon on the Mount, is the first of those blocks of teaching about how to live in the kingdom of God with kingdom values. Not advanced teaching for some kind of SAS Christians, but teaching for all of us if we're serious about following Jesus. The generic slide that's up behind me has the last verse of uh, the Sermon on the Mount. It's a reminder that the whole of the sermon, this block of teaching, depends on the punchline, which, of course, comes at the end. Who is wise, asks Jesus. Answer, he, she, who hears these words of mine and, very importantly, puts them into practice. You've heard that so many times, I guess, in these last weeks. Or, if you want it in a more simple way, Which is the most important wing on the aeroplane? Stupid question. They both are. 
So hear and do is what Jesus is saying. If you don't, then it's all worthless. Interestingly, Luke, who has a different take on the Sermon on the Mount, has a slightly different nuance. He adds that the wise man or wise woman is the one, Luke 7, verse 49, 48, is the one who dug deeply and laid foundations on the rock. In other words, being a disciple is about hearing the words of Jesus. It's about putting those words into practice and from Luke's perspective, and digging down deeply, which of course implies effort. Anything worth having in the New Testament, anything takes effort. There are no shortcuts. And which words does Jesus mean? Answer, all of them. Everything from the beginning of chapter 5 to the end of chapter 7, that's your homework. That's what you're meant to be working on. So it's not just your favorite bits. It's all of them. It's yet, it's about those about loving your enemies. We've heard a bit about that already this morning. It's about uh, praying for those who persecute you. It's about the things you shouldn't do. And it's about the things you should do. All of them. And into this context comes our reading. Remember, these are the words of Jesus. It's not, it's not me telling it you. It's Jesus. It's not good advice. It's not from a book you pick up on a railway station. It's not some trendy lifestyle hints for 2024. The very words of Jesus. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is he being serious? Yes, he is. Don't worry, he's saying to us. Life is stressful. He knows that. That's why he finishes this block of teaching with that verse we've just read. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. David Ford, a friend of some here, I think, talks in his wonderful book, The Shape of Living, of the daily experience of most people is one of, and I love this phrase, is one of multiple overwhelmings. Do you know that one? Of course you know that one. You're alive. You've got a pulse. Therefore, you will know life is full of multiple overwhelmings. So what on earth does he mean, don't worry, when we all know we do? So far, in his sermon, he's expounded the law. He's told us that how in him the law is maximized, how in him we can see that life with him is amazing and the liberation it brings. And he says... Here are three things you should do if you want hearts devoted to God. Anthony spoke about them last week. When you, it's going to pop up on the screen now, when you give, when you fast, when you pray. When you, and there are conditions you may remember. Don't don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Do these things in secret. Don't pray like the hypocrites. So it comes with a health warning. And then he puts three don'ts up, very interestingly. Don't store up treasure, don't worry, don't judge. And we're in the middle, in the kingdom, here are the things you're not to do. Jesus says, I tell you. This is the king speaking. And in our passage, he says, do not worry. Do not be anxious four times, he says it. Hard words. In fact, some of us here this morning are worrying now that you've heard that Jesus says, don't worry. Guarantee it. Do not worry. Well, he also says what it's not. It's not a rebuke for you if you worry. It's not a finger-pointing sermon from Jesus, but rather it's a call to greater responsibility, to embrace the teaching of Jesus, because you may have noticed in life There are many things to worry about. Make your own list. You may use extra paper if required. Personal worries, maybe your health, your family, local issues, national issues, the ever-changing global world of geopolitical shifts, which change by the hour, who your new vicar might be here, all legitimate worries. 
For instance, there are 336 million people in the United States of America, and they've come up with Donald Trump and Joe Biden. How is that even possible? <laughs> 336 million, anyway. So why is it that in the kingdom of God we're told not to worry? Part of our difficulty as we look at the world is that we think Jesus is only concerned with spiritual things, that the kingdom of God is about a spiritual thing, which it is. But he's also concerned about not just the non-material, but also about the physical. God is interested in us, flesh and blood and spirit, for that is what we are. Look at what it says in Genesis. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. That is what we are. We are flesh and blood that God has breathed into. God, it seems, is bothered about the physical, what you eat and drink and wear. They matter. He says here in Matthew that the kingdom of heaven is not just a spiritual thing, though it is. It's also physical, here on earth. It's about everyday things. Everyday things you may well worry about. So what's he saying? He's saying life is more than just food or clothes or your life. He's saying don't think too small. He's saying you're created by God and made in his image and he has breathed in his life into you and yet we become obsessed with these temporal things, food and clothes and drink. Look at the beginning of COVID and the mania in this nation about toilet rolls. I mean, staggering. How did that even happen? It just shows you what people become obsessed with if they think they're going to lose it. And Jesus says to us, you are more than these things. So much more. So much more valuable. And then he gives us two pictures. Birds and flowers. So, birds and flowers. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying at a single uh, to your life. God is constantly caring all the time, even in and especially in the small things, even in birds feeding, he says, because he's God. He's working all the time. He's caring all the time. Psalm 84. There's a beautiful old song we used to sing a long time ago in the church. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. In other words, security in God. And Jesus says, are you not more valuable than that, than the birds that he cares for? When Jesus says, do not worry, he's not saying to us this morning, for goodness sake, get a grip. Come on, sort it out. Of course he's not. He's not saying there's nothing to worry about. He's saying you have a Father in heaven who cares for you and who is constantly working for you all the time. He's always good. I know that many of you here will know the African Christian greeting and response. God is good all the time. And the response, all the time, God is good. It's not trite. It's true according to Matthew 6. He's good despite everything happening in us, around us, and to us. You're more valuable than the birds and God cares for them. And how about the flowers? Look what he says there. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? 
A very simple picture. God clothes them, God makes them grow, and if he does that for them, transient as they are, will he not do that for you? The birds, you're more valuable than them. The flowers, you last longer than them. So do not worry about what we shall eat or wear or drink. He knows you need them. He knows. And then he says this. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Now the pagans, Matthew is saying, are those who don't know God as their father. And they run around like headless chickens. And that's what most people spend most of their time doing in our society. Constantly stressed, constantly worried, constantly anxious. And it's easy for us to fall into that. Of course it is. You know, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? Are you a, are you a doom scroller? Do you do that? Is that the first thing you do in the morning? It is for many people. Constant exposure to the negativity of much news or whatever it may be that throws us into a, almost before we've even stepped out of bed. <gasps> and Jesus says, do not. No, don't be like them. You have a heavenly father. Turn to him. Cry out to him. For he is constantly working. He is no absent landlord. He's not careless. He's not weak. He knows what we need. Our bodies matter, he says. He's constantly working and caring. And all this is leading up to the punchline in the passage, in verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In other words, our call as Christians is to reset the compass. Remember, a one-degree change on a compass, one degree, is a completely different destination. So the heart of why you should not worry or be anxious is not because it's bad for you, which long-term it is, not because it will stress you out, which it will. It's simply that it will stop you seeking first, which is your actual calling as a disciple, his kingdom, which he's brought you into. And if you're always running around stressed and anxious, you don't have the time to seek him. It's really as simple as that. That's what he's saying to us here in this passage. Consider the birds of the air, consider the lilies of the field. Well, here's consider the Church of England. Can it get any more crazy? I say this because I was ordained 40 years ago, and I'm allowed to say it now because I no longer work for them. Uh, can it get any more crazy? The answer is apparently yes. Daily, it would appear. I was ordained uh, in 1984. Now, there's a great prophetic year to be ordained in. Uh, there's even a novel of that name, which has recently been turned into a manual for life, as far as I can tell. But uh, the C of E, and uh, I may get sued for this, but who cares? You don't, as you get over 60, you don't really care much anymore, bizarrely. I don't know why. But despite an increasingly confused and inept, in my opinion, senior leadership of the C of E, with a desperate desire to marry the spirit of the age they seem to be acting a bit like this. This is a quote from a man called Gregory Jones from Duke University in the States. And he says this, when we become overly preoccupied with maintaining the activities of our institutions, when fear of scarcity overwhelms us, when survival dominates our mindset, we lose sight of God. We become practical atheists rather than spirit-inspired people of hope. Sounds frighteningly familiar. We are called not to be that. We're called to be spirit-inspired people of hope, who don't spend our time worrying, but spend our time seeking first his kingdom, so that we as individuals, as church communities, even societies may live in a way that points to our Father in heaven. That, in essence, is what we probably would call revival, isn't it? The Sermon on the Mount is about how to live in the kingdom, but it comes with a few warnings. Do this, 
as we looked at last week here, don't do this. Why? So you can focus on the kingdom. And Jesus summed it all up when he said this, when he was being questioned, what is the point of life? And Jesus answers, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. We'd like to think there was some deep secret, but there isn't. It's that. It really is that. That's it. If you do this, he says, the kingdom will grow. Those are his words, not mine. Love God, love others. Now think about that. Love God, love others. Before we met Jesus, before he impacted our lives, it was the other way around. We tended to love ourselves and use others. But the Jesus revolution twists it all around. Love him, love others. It was revolutionary then, and it's still revolutionary today. Life-changing, society-changing, earth-changing. The famous missionary pioneer Oswald Smith famously said, at the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. It always has been. Before Jesus, before we meet him, I'm king. And everything revolved around me, and interestingly, I ended up running around trying to find peace and purpose, always stressed, always striving. Now, meeting him, totally different. You seek the kingdom, he says, when you love God and other people. So start today. Start today. Start now. Start when you have a cup of coffee after the service. Talk to the person who looks on their own. Don't just talk to your mates like we probably most of us do do that, don't we? Branch out in a practical, simple way. What are you going to do tomorrow at work with that really annoying person? Jesus says you've got to love them. You've got to show kingdom values. Remember earlier in the sermon, you've got to be salt and light. All the clues for Christian living are in Matthew 5 to 7. They're all there. All we have to do is hear it and do it. When someone winds you up the wrong way, forgive them. When you're on your own and that temptation is to do a few more clicks and enter the darkness of lust, say no to it and yes to his kingdom. Be ruthless to sin. It's about living every day, seeking him and seeking first his kingdom. Love God, love people, Stop trying to overcomplicate it. But most of all, he says, don't worry. Don't be anxious. Listen to his voice. Some of you, I suspect, if you're anything like me, still spend a lot of time stressing out and getting anxious. And he says here, he knows, he understands. This is not under the thumb. It really isn't. It's living under his smile, not under his thumb. He knows. He understands. That's why he finishes with that verse. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, for each day has enough trouble of its own. Of course, worry will impact your life. Just don't make it your focus. The great saint Augustine, in his wonderful little book, well, big book, really, Confessions, if you've ever read it. Augustine of Hippo, famous prayer. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. Hundreds of years old, and how apt it is for today. Is your heart restless? Do you spend much of your life worrying? Well, as we draw to a close and as we live in the midst of much uncertainty in our own nation and the world, fear of the future, where the scene is set daily for us to be multiply overwhelmed and constantly anxious, let me finish with an insight from a guy called Mark Oakley, who is the, I think he's the dean of Southwark Cathedral these days. And he said this, Visiting his grandmother, as he often did, in Shropshire, uh, the house backed onto farmland, and he noticed in the fields behind her a local shepherd 
who over the years uh, he had on occasion spoken to, holding a crook, like a real picture postcard moment of a farmer shepherd with crook. So he trudged out into the field and asked him, how did he use his crook? Now, most of us would think the crook is used for pulling sheep out of trees and out of streams and all that stuff. And the shepherd looked at him. He said, uh, well, I don't really do any of that at all. He said, uh, when I use the crook, I smash it into the ground firmly so I can hold onto it so tight that I become still enough that the sheep learn to hear and know my voice and trust me. And I thought, what a beautiful picture that is in our mad and anxious world of Jesus. The one who throws the, the crook into the ground, holding it tight so that we may see the stillness in him, that we may trust him, that we may hear his voice. And some of us haven't heard that voice, I suspect, in a long time. Coming to church, maybe, going through the motions, running on empty, living in the world of if only. Today, may I encourage you to give him your yes, to hear his voice, for he is strong and kind. Here again to you, this is my son. This is my daughter with whom I am pleased. Pleased. And may he grant us the freshness of becoming spirit-filled people of hope, people who know his voice, people who hear his words and put them into practice, and most of all seek his kingdom. At the end of chapter 10, and on this I will finish, at the end of chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, Paul writing to this Troublesome church in so many ways says this to them. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So do not worry. Seek first his kingdom and all these other things will be added to you. May God bless you. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's just take a moment to allow the spirit just to draw out from what we've heard. right to recognize that Jesus challenges us with those words. It's right to recognize that for some of us, gripped in worry, it's hard to see the bigger picture. I think Nigel's done a wonderful job of bringing out that bigger picture, seeking God's kingdom. Not allowing the stuff of this life, which includes worry and anxiety, to cloud our vision. And just as Nigel was speaking, there's a passage in Ephesians, Ephesians 2, that came to my mind in verse 10. Where Paul says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God knows the work that he set before us. He knows every inch and fibre of us. And he cares for us. You may not seem it today. I think there's a challenge there for us to open our hearts and to receive that word fresh. For us to be spirit-inspired people of hope, we need to know how much our Father cares. And he does.
And so perhaps today, take that invitation and allow it to drop into your heart. But to say that this is a big subject and that if something has triggered just something within you today and you'd really value prayer and of course there's resources like the Healing Prayer Centre which I can give you details for. There's the recovery programme. But actually what you might need is just to draw to a friend, turn to a friend and say, I'm really struggling with this. Can you pray for me? Or to grab a member of of the St. John's team and say, I really need some prayer over this because I want to be that spirit-inspired person of hope. But this is just too heavy to carry. So that is the invitation this morning, friends. We're to seek the kingdom to enable us to do that we need to ask God to help us with our anxiety I wonder if we could just put that prayer back up from Augustine I wonder if we might want to say that together corporately and if you don't feel able to say that prayer then that's fine But maybe we'll pray that as part of our response this morning and then we'll lead back into some worship. So almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. So just a reminder that there is prayer available. Or you might just want to turn to a friend after the service or over coffee. But let's continue to respond in sung worship.
So we're going to bring our service to a close. Just a reminder that there is prayer. If you turn to a friend or come and find one of the staff members, if anything has just really triggered this morning. Let's pray together as we head out. Father God, we thank you that you care for us, that you care about the big things and that you care about the small, tiny things. Thank you that you called us as your children. Thank you that we are your masterpiece in your eyes. You call us and send us out into this world to seek your kingdom and to bring your kingdom closer into this world. So, Father God, do that with us today. Equip us and strengthen us to be sent out to tell those that we know and love, those that we struggle with, that you are a caring God and that you love all. So, Father, as we head out today, give us that peace that some of us might need. Give those of us who need strength and energy and be with us as we go into this working week. And the blessing, God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.